Ms. Malone is a child of God in need, and it's my duty as a deacon to care for her first. Derek, we have got a problem, and this thing cannot be ignored. Come on, baby. When is the right time? We need to pick a time and a date, and we need to let the whole church know. Look, I never said we were going to get married, okay? I never used those words. We must become seekers of God's presence. In His presence, there's power. The moment the enemy senses power, that's when the battle begins. My ex-boyfriend, he's just got a bad temper. He's just really, really mad, that's all. Jerry, I'm back! And I'm not leaving here without you. Pastor Lynn, you better not ever tell anyone about this. Smile. Let me give you a picture of this. No, I can't do that tomorrow. I got that funeral. Then how about I schedule it for Friday? Fr Friday will work. Hey, can I come in? Hey, Billy, come on in. Thank you. How's everybody doing? We're doing good. Good, good. What you up to? Well, I just stopped by to see if you'd give me a brief statement and to let you know what's going on. So, you mean you're trying to tell me that you're getting to the bottom of things? <laughs> good one, good one. Good one? Anyways, I brought your deacon's belt. Okay. I didn't want to leave it behind. Another good one? Yeah, Another good yeah, one? Yeah, you know what you think. <laughs> I owe you something, though. Yeah? Here's five bucks. Five bucks? What's this for? I charged the guys a buck a piece to read that report. <laughs> you did not do that. Ten of them took me up on it. <laughs> I figured, what the heck, I'll split it with you. <laughs> well, I tell you, what the heck, I'll take it. <laughs> and um, I'll bet they could barely quit laughing. <laughs> they couldn't stop talking about his old glory underwear. Was that funny? It was. <laughs> and you know what? What? They'll never again be able to salute the flag with a straight face, ever. I'll bet. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with you two in this hiney humor but I feel like I'm bringing up the rear. Oh, kazing, she got one in. That's good. <laughs> Enough. Right, can we move on, please? She never lets me have any fun. Never. Nope. <laughs> anyway, I want to know, did you find out anything? You bet your tidy ways I did. Kazing. <laughs> and you're going to mm. be interested. We ran a record check on the guy. He's not her boyfriend. Well, joke time's over. Yep. Then who or what is he? Her pimp. What? Yep, her pimp. So she's a prostitute? She's part of the area sex trade. Oh, she's barely out of diapers. Mm -hmm. Oh, Billy, she's just a child. Lynn, the sex trade in our area has reached an unimaginable depth of pure evil. And social media has made it a thousand times worse. Yeah, and sleazebags troll the internet for unhappy and impressionable young girls, tell them what they want to hear, and convince them to run away from home. The younger, the better. Mm, mm, mm. I'll tell you, there is a hell, and it's hot. Scorching, scorching. Are the police having any success getting any of these girls out of that cesspool? They do, but there's no place to put them. But the county has a battered women's shelter, doesn't it? They do, but they concentrate on domestic violent cases. So they don't want to take these girls from the sex trade? No. Mm -hmm. 
Well, now in truth, there would be some issues discouraging that. Yep. I mean, I don't think it'd be wise to place the ladies that have been rough on the streets, house them with the same folks as young moms and children. It's just not smart. But the county could build buildings specifically for these girls, right? Yeah, a place where they could be protected and heal. Well, which reason do you want? Number one, the caseworkers would be overloaded. Number two, there's no political will to finance a project like that. And number three is the NIMBY reason, not in my backyard. Good old not in my backyard. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think that's a good thing. Because in truth, this should not be the work of the government. It should be the work of the church. Because you and I know that it will take God Almighty himself to bring about the kind of healing that these girls need. Good luck with that. It's going to take way more than one church to support one home. And getting churches to work together? <laughs> Just like he said, good luck with that. But the need, the need is so great. Mm -hmm. Look, all I know is God remains the God of the impossible. All we have to do is have faith and determination. Well, she's got both of those. Oh, amen to that. Anyways, I have to get back to work. If you need anything, just give me a call. You're the best. Thank you. Doors always open. You're going to be learning things that they didn't teach when I was in school, and I can't wait for the day when you're teaching me. That's gonna be an exciting day for me. Excuse me, Pastor Lynn. There's a gentleman here to see you. He and his wife are interested in being a part of our church. Well, yeah. welcome. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Lindley, Pastor Lynn. Nice to meet you, Pastor. Nice to meet you. Please have a seat. Thank you. Is your wife coming? Well, she had some very important shopping to do today. Our little puppy, had a, a little accident and her, the diamond fell out of her collar. And so she had to get her a new one. This is not the first time. Oh, this is gonna be good. May I get you some coffee or some tea? No, thank you. I had a late breakfast. Well, please, tell me about yourself. What is going on with you? We've had extensive experience in the church world and uh, we would love to use that experience to help you grow. I know those people. So? So, they are trouble with the capital T. And rest assured, we will be bold in the spirit and humble at heart. Well, we can certainly always use more servants who love God and are willing to roll up their sleeves and get to work. They go from church to church tearing stuff up. What are you talking about? Listen, they pit deacon against deacon, deacon against pastor, and listen, it's all about the mighty dollar with them. They use their money to try to get positions in the church. Wow. Well, we sure don't want them here. No. So we got to figure out a way to tell Lynn. Now, how you think we're going to do that? We just can't walk up to her and say, oh, there's a pair of demons. Toss them out. Think. We got to think, okay? But I have to admit, out of curiosity, I would really like to know about the last church you attended. I don't see any reason to uh, go into all of that. We just felt like that the church had grown so large, we needed to find a smaller church where we could take that gift and help you grow. And how do you expect to begin here? Well, just off the top of my head, as I drove into the parking lot, I noticed your church sign looked rather old uh -huh. and uh, out of date. Uh -huh. It could use a little updating. So I took it upon myself to write this check for $2,000. $2,000? So you could go do something about that sign. Why, that's uh, very gracious of you. Mr. Lindley. Well, we just feel like we need to set an example so that other people can follow. And uh, there's more where that came from. I see.
and, and you were saying? Now that you know that we can pay our way, we should uh, discuss that leadership position that you have for us. Uh-huh. Well, you certainly have laid out a lengthy resume for me. Uh, but frankly, Mr. Lindley, uh, considering that you want an answer today, a concrete answer, I think it would be wisdom if we prayed. Would you do the honors, please? Dear Lord, I thank you for sending us here to be of great value to this church. We are leaders, and you know that we will bless all of those you place beneath us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Was that good for you? Because it was surely good to me. <laughs> Lovely prayer, Mr. Lindley. So, you're interested in the leadership position. Well, I don't think we should expect any less. Mm -hmm. Well, let me start out by saying that, and you know this, people flow in and out of churches all the time. So around here, we found it's wisdom to kind of test folk in the small things before we put them over the big. Well, that shouldn't apply to us. Well, stay with me here for a minute. It just so happens that we do indeed have one opening for a leadership position that is quite demanding. I'm sure we would qualify for that. Oh, I think you're qualified. Now, this ministry requires maturity requires the ability to be able to sniff out problems and wipe them out, you know, before things get real messy. We can handle that all right. Mm, I thought you could. Now, the truth of the matter is, if you and your wife do a good job, I'm telling you, you two can clean up. That sounds interesting. Doesn't it? Yes. yes. Okay, so let me explain that around here, we affectionately refer to it as the PB Patrol. The PB Patrol. Mm-hmm. Just what is that? Well, think about it. What would a PB Patrol do? Oh, I know, I know. You want to put us over the uh, parking lot and security. We could uh, have uh, parking places for the leadership, which would include us. And I could make signs, and uh, uh, we'll need an office to operate out of. Well, that's not exactly what the PB Patrol is. Uh, it's more in line with who cleanliness is next to godliness. You've heard the saying before. What is a PB Patrol? PB. Well, let me start out by explaining. Obviously, we're a small congregation. And so we've had to combine ministries. Fortunately, the configuration of this church was just perfect so that the nursery was located right next to the adult restrooms. And so we were able to combine the two ministries and put the PB Patrol over both of them. It worked great. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the PB Patrol. Get it? PB? Poopy butt. Poopy butt. Poopy butt? This is a disgrace. No, it makes perfect sense now. Think about it. You've got the nursery, little poopies, and over in the adults, we've got, well, you understand that. But I'm telling you, it's important because this is a ministry that you can sniff out these problems and wipe them out. It's an important ministry. I get the feeling you're trying to get rid of me. Get rid of me? This is no. a disgrace. No, no, you might be onto something. I'm now. leaving. I'm going to take this back. Don't you worry. I will never come back here. Do you understand me? Wait, wait. Does that mean we don't get the sign? Does this mean we won't, won't get the sign? We could use that sign. Rats. See, I like to think that I can think on my feet as fast as anyone, but I bow down before you. <laughs> You are the masterpiece of trickery. <laughs> that was awesome. But just so you know, the next time somebody refers to me as a nut job, I'm sending them straight to you two. 
<laughs> you guys know what? I cannot wait to tell my pastoral theology class about this one right here. They're not going to believe it. Oh, my goodness. But oh, listen, on the real, real serious, nope. They weren't only trouble. They were pretty dangerous, to be honest with you. Yeah. And I thank you, too, for warning me. Truly, I do. Because what God's doing here is something wonderful. I know it's pleasing to his heart to see two different cultures coming together, learning to work together for the purposes of his kingdom. And therefore, I won't let anything or anyone disrupt that. It's just not going to happen, regardless of what I have to do. <laughs> Amen to that. Yes. Bless the Lord. <laughs> I have it on video. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Way better than pictures. Whoa. Let me see. Watch this. <laughs> we needed a new sign. Oh, goodness. <laughs> The heating and the air went out again, did it? Oh, honey, deader than a doornail. Kaput! It's okay. Gina's going to get a cost for the repair, and it didn't seem to be any problem for us to have the leadership meeting here, so it's all good. Then why you seem so quiet? Oh, I've just been doing a lot of thinking and a whole lot of talking to my father. Would that have anything to do with the tag team that you and Deacon Hall had yesterday? That? <laughs> nah, honey, I consider that sheer sport. Kind of perks up my day, you know? <laughs> no. I've just been thinking about time and how critical it is that we use it wisely for the kingdom. We all need to think about that. We do. And... I've been thinking about what an unbelievable privilege it is to be Christ's hands extended to those in need. Well, do you have something specific in mind? Joshua, so much of God's work, that which used to be done by the church, mm -hmm. has been basically taken over by the government. The more that grows, the more the church shrinks. That deserves both thought and prayer. It does. I mean, if you think about it, when folk need money, where do they go? The government, welfare. Folk need food, where do they go? The government, food stamps. Folk are sick, they don't have any money, where do they go? The government, Medicaid. Now, I understand there are those that are in real need, but my concern is a whole lot of those folk are depending more on government then they're depending on God. And those people, how will they ever hear the words of life? How will they ever have holy hands laid upon them? So Christ's healing and provisional, his providing graces flow through them. How will that ever happen? They won't. Much as it try, the government can never take the place mm -hmm. of what the church was designed to do. And it was never meant to. Mm. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes. Are you thinking of any solution? I'm thinking of one solution for one problem. Hmm. Officer Lansky came by yesterday oh, yeah. and informed me that Terry Lands is a part of the sex trade. Oh, no. I was sick about it. Hmm. Sick about it. And what made it worse is in this whole area. Joshua, there's not one single facility for her or any other girl who happens to escape the trade to be able to go to find refuge and healing. Not one. Well, I'm guessing you're thinking about doing something about that. Do you know 
that in this relatively small area of three cities, there are over 600 churches? No, but I can believe it. 600. That's a lot of hands extended. Now just imagine if four, five, or six of them out of 600 would get together and say, hey, let's join hands. Let's get this job done for the kingdom, for the king. Mm. Well, you think about that. Oh, yes. Oh, my Lord, I love you. If I could only figure a way to get you cloned. She's right. It's a real problem. But it's also a real need. Yeah. Well, the last time I looked, there are a lot of real problems and needs out there, and we just can't solve them all. Mm -hmm. But God can, yeah. moving in us and through us. Deacon Hall, I am surprised by your lack of enthusiasm. Didn't mm -hmm. you say you had a close friend? who was affected by this? Yeah, but that was a long time ago. His name was Jeremiah, and he was my best friend. Mm -hmm. He lost his daughter to the sex trade. Mm -hmm. my goodness. She just went downtown to see a movie, and she never returned. Oh, dear. In the end, a John beat her to death. What? Yeah. And her father had to identify the body. I often. Mm -hmm. And that's something no father should ever have to endure. That's true. Mm -hmm. He was never the same after that, mm -hmm. and I lost my best friend. Mm -hmm. Was is past tense. What happened to him? He died. Mm -hmm. Really? And he died a broken man with a broken heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It devastated their entire family. So, would there have been a different outcome if they had found her alive? And if the churches had come together and built a house of refuge? Mm -hmm. Look, I think it appears fairly obvious that God indeed has set this thing before us. Mm -hmm. So, here's the question. Do we want to be the hands of Christ or not? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. And I say that as mother of the church. There you go. Think of it this way, Lamar. Wouldn't it be a wonderful way to honor the memory of Jeremiah and his daughter? Wouldn't you like that? Yes, I would. Mm. And so would Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, can we name the first house after him? Sure. Well, sure. Mm -hmm. And then we can name the other one after his daughter, Hannah. Yes. <laughs> That's a good idea. Okay, yeah. since we're all in agreement now, this is what I propose. Now, Pastor McKnight's told me about y'all's family reunions, and he says they can fill a football stadium. Mm -hmm. So somewhere in there, there have got to be some pastors. 300 at the last one. Pastors? <laughs> no, family members. <laughs> but out of that, about a half a dozen are pastors. Okay. And the rest of them... They think that they are. <laughs> <laughs> Lordy, we know them, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Look, can you find me four or five of them? Sure. And Mary, please don't send me any fame seekers. Mm. I just want to see leaders who are willing to put the cause of Christ above their own recognition. Yeah. Fair enough? Fair enough. Yeah. Is that okay? That's okay. Then let's get busy. Let's get busy. All right. Yeah.